Everybody, this is Darian with another message for the 316s, and today we are going to be doing a message on salvation. And I feel really serious about this one, guys, because this is what sets us apart from the world. This is what sets apart the believers from the people who call themselves Christians. And it begins by doing two things, accepting and repenting. And we're going to go over this today. And we are going to learn something amazing about the salvation message. That it's actually something that's living. We're going to be in Acts 16. And we're going to be looking at verses 30 through 31. And I'm not going to read it just yet because we have an amazing text today. And I can't wait to tell you about it. But first off, how do you get saved? Where does that start? Is it more than just believing? What does a saved person look like? And how can we know that we are saved? It's gonna be some questions that we look at today and hopefully that I can answer for you. And I have questions too, a lot of them. And I believe that they are found in the word and that's why we use the word of God to answer these questions. We're gonna start with the basics here, acceptance and repentance. And the first step is acceptance. We must accept that we mess things up. See, in Genesis chapter 3, it talks about through the lies of the, the serpent in the garden, which was the devil. We mess things up pretty badly. And now we are separate from God. We can't be in a right relationship. We are cast out. We mess things up pretty badly when we brought sin into the world. And... Maybe you can say, oh, well, I never would have done that. If I were there, I would have given in. I had God right there. No, you would have done that too. Adam and Eve were just as human as you were, and they were closer to God than you are. They walked with God. They had God right there. They were in perfect fellowship, and they still sinned. So the enemy is very cunning. He is very crafty. And he can even get you, who is in a right relationship with God, to doubt. But we need to accept that we've sinned, fallen short of being in the presence of a perfect and holy God. And accept that we can't do this anymore. This life that we're supposed to live as a Christian, or this life that we're supposed to live on this earth, it's messed up. It's hard. We can't do this alone. And if we accept that we can't, then that's when things start to go somewhere. It allows us to be able to have faith in a salvation. The second step to the salvation message is repentance. And this is the one that people don't like to hear. This is the one that I don't like to hear because it's the most vital part and we just flake it off like it's nothing. We need to care about this. And the reason for that is yeah, we can accept that we mess things up, but if there's not an action to back that up, faith without action is dead. It says in the Word. So we need to have an action, and that is repentance. After accepting, then comes repentance. Most people don't really realize the severity of their sins. They don't think it's a big deal that the sins in their life are, are separating them from being in a right relationship with God. And you might not think that's so bad, but one day you might. And one day it might be too late for you when you are answering to a holy and perfect God. And it's not a matter if, if you're going to answer to him. You will. It's if you believe. And we're going to touch on that just a little bit. But when you belittle your sin and make it not a big deal, we're not in a place where we're saying... God, your will be done. And he, he can't bring about the Holy Spirit in our lives or any salvation. If we're not willing to turn away, which is 
what repentance means. If we're not willing to turn away from our sins, then we are not willing to turn to a salvation message, to a savior. But when we do feel that conviction in our hearts, and conviction is just a churchy word for being cut to the heart or realizing that we've done something wrong and that we need to repent and that we need to turn away. If you feel that and if you've ever felt that before, that's the Holy Spirit and He is calling you to accept the salvation message and I pray today that this would be something that you'd want to do for the first time and I can't make you do this and God gives us all something called free will to choose of our own whether we want to turn away or not and this is what defines the Christian the believer the true and solid believer from someone who just says they are by the action of repentance Repentance is more than words, it's actions to back up our words. If we say we are sorry for stabbing our friend in the back, not literally, because that would be horrible. Why would we want to do that? I mean it figuratively. But if we go and betray someone, and we say we're sorry, but then go and do it all over again, do we really mean it? Do they think that we'll really mean it? Not at all. They, they won't believe it because we don't have an action for asking for forgiveness. So there must be some sort of clear sign that we really mean it. And if we really want to repent, there's got to be some sort of sign here. Maybe that's quitting something that we're really into. That's taking the place of God in our life. With, because without repentance, it cannot bring salvation or God's will being done in our lives. So... If we accept Jesus as our Savior and repent with our whole hearts, we can be 100% guaranteed that He will accept you. But God knows what's in our hearts, so we can't hide anything from Him. If we are not true in our repentance, if our repentance isn't true, maybe we think it's true, but in our hearts, it's not. We're just doing it to, to fit in because we're in the moment, we're feeling that high of the Holy Spirit. But if it's true, He'll know. So if someone's saying, ah, you're not saved, you can't tell me that you're saved, but you, but you know it, you meant it, and God knows it, that's all there is to it. You don't have to answer to anybody else, you answer to God. But we can know that if we accept Jesus as our Savior and repent with our whole hearts, we can be 100% guaranteed that he will accept us. This doesn't 100% mean that life will be easy, but we can know that we have eternal life if we are filled with the Holy Spirit, which we will be talking about next week. I don't want to go too much into it, but it's a work of our will and the Holy Spirit's will, and that's what I want to say. We have to be willing, and the Holy Spirit has to be calling us, and that's how we are, we come to be saved. But what about the next journey in our lives? What about people who are saved? What happens to them? See, we can't just be saved and say, oh, we're going to heaven. We could just live in seclusion and not worry about it. We need to do something about it. See, things get hard sometimes when we have faith in Jesus. People get weirded out by our lives. That we don't listen to this music that we used to listen to a month ago before we believed. Or that we walk away when people are watching certain things on YouTube or uh, looking at certain things on the internet or gossiping. Or when we don't talk bad about our boss or about our teachers or about this really crazy friend or our parents. When, when, when we don't do that, people see that and they're like, what is wrong with you? And things get hard and we... We get persecuted because of that. But those who are saved should start to see a difference in their lives, and people should start to see a difference in their lives. Like last week when I talked about being a living Bible, yeah, people should see that. People should see you and see your different life. And there's different responses to that, but we all need to be all in for Jesus. This We can't just be a heart that's divided. We can't have our loyalty in the world and our loyalty to Jesus at the same time. That's like saying that we believe in 
in God, but we also believe in other gods too. There can't be that. We need to believe in the one true God that sent a salvation message for us so that we can be saved from our sins. It's like having a relationship with your wife. And you're married, you love your wife, but at the same time you love somebody else. You can't do that. That is, that is being disloyal to your wife. You made a promise to your wife or your husband to love them unconditionally, them alone until death do you part. And if you say that you love Jesus Christ, you need to love him alone. You can't love the things of this world more than Jesus. And that's when you're, you'll start to run into problems. And no wonder, because you're not loving Jesus 100%. We cheat ourselves of a beautiful relationship with the God of all the universe, the loving God that, that sent his son. And we're being a heart divided, half loyal to God and half loyal to the world. And this should not be... And as much as we can know the salvation message inside and out, there are times when our salvation seems puny, that it seems like it doesn't matter, but it does. Is that natural? Yes, it is. All believers go through a season of doubt, maybe more than one. But if we cling to the faith that we have in Jesus Christ, if we stay in the Word, if we read our Bible and know the Jesus of the Bible, then... We won't be cheated out of a, a, a half relationship with God. We will have a full relationship when we stand on the facts and the truth of the gospel. And the gospel message is basically just the truth about Jesus. What he did, what he came to do, what he said. And I believe that the whole message is true. And if you believe in the salvation message, you got to believe that it's true too in your heart. And that should change something within you. If you believe that Jesus said that your sin, it ruins things, that you need to repent, then you need to take that seriously. That's, that's a truth. We have a living sacrifice that didn't crawl off the altar here, but willingly was led to be tortured for us because our sin was severe. The fact that Jesus died is real, but something else is also real. The fact that Jesus is alive is real too, guys. We see that in the Easter story, that Jesus died, but he came back to life. The, the grave was empty. He is alive. But it's hard to think that the same guy who died on the cross lives again. But see, that's what the salvation message is all about. And this is the most exciting thing about it. If we say that and believe in the salvation then this must be true that Jesus is alive. He is the atonement for our sins. What that means is that he was the substitute, the innocent substitute that took the blow for us. Even though we didn't deserve it, God sent a shield that took the final blow for us of sin. He, he, he said it was finished. It's all gone. The enemy could try to tempt us, but if we believe in Jesus, our sins are atoned for. But the salvation went beyond that. That he took the blow, but also gave us a promise. He gave us a promise from the very beginning. He gave the promise to Eve that we would have a Messiah, a Savior that would come and give us eternal life. A final victory over sin. And that comes when knowing that Jesus is alive. In the beginning, we inflicted sorrow on ourselves. We inflicted this sin into the world. But Jesus would come and bring salvation to those who are spiritually dead and restore our right standing with God. We can also live eternally because Jesus lives. Jesus' life is also proven. A man named Jesus walked this earth way back when. What he said in the Bible what is written down, it's up to us to make a decision to whether we believe it's real or not. And here, here's the true fact here. The question isn't if he lived. The question isn't if he lived, if he died, or if he lives again. The, the question is if we believe it. Do you believe it? You can shut your ears and go la 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 and pretend like this didn't happen. But it doesn't change the fact that it did happen, that our sin was severe, and that Jesus did come and pay the penalty. 
believing in a salvation that is alive, a salvation that will put everyone before himself, someone that would suffer unjustly for those who hated him. It sounds insane, but it's what sets us apart from other religious nonsense, to know that a God, a, a perfect God, would come and die for us. Jesus is alive, and if he is alive, then he can certainly make you and me alive too. And that's what salvation is all about, giving us new life. And we don't deserve this. Because look at what we do to him all the time. We choose other things before him. In fact, we chose sin ultimately over him in the garden. And we would have done that if we were there too, like I said earlier. But he did it anyway. I want to read to you what happened here in Acts. See, there was this jailer, and he was about to kill himself. In this story, there was a violent earthquake. Paul and Silas were in prison here, and God broke them both out of the chains were broken. If those prisoners escaped, he would be killed. But no, Paul called out, don't harm yourself, we're all here. So the jailer called for the lights, and he fell trembling before Paul and Silas, and this is what he asked. He asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And this is our text today, and it, this is what Paul and Silas said. They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your whole household. So it's not a matter if this happened. If Jesus came, if he died, if he lives, it's a matter of if we believe it. Do Will you believe it? Will you accept? Will you repent? Will you believe in Jesus? And that is the question I have for you today. Paul's life, it pointed to Jesus because he was radically changed by Jesus. He had an experience where Jesus blinded him. Jesus was made real to him for the first time on the way to persecute Christians, to kill Christians. He was a murderer, and today we'd be afraid of this man, but Jesus saved this man, and he can save anybody. So if he can save Paul, he can save anybody. He can save you, no matter what bad things you've done. And Paul had a moment where he, God made himself real. The salvation message was, was real. Jesus blinded him, but when Paul received his sight again, he believed. Because the Jesus whom he was persecuting was talked to him, made himself real to him. And that's what we all need. We need a real experience with Jesus in order to be saved the final step we need we need to be drawn we need to be we need that holy spirit there to to draw us to make it real to us if you've never had that real personal experience with jesus that salvation being made real to you i want to give you that opportunity today and i'm i can't make you believe jesus can't make you believe the Bible can't make you believe. No one can. It's a decision that you have to make on your own. And I pray that you would make that decision today to follow Jesus because there's freedom. If you want the freedom, if you want the forgiveness for all the sins that you've ever done and all the sins that you will ever do, he already died for that. He already did. And if you don't accept Jesus, then there's no hope left. But we see here today that Paul gave the jailer hope. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. And it says after that, Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the others in his house. And they were baptized and saved. They believed in Jesus. So I want to give you that opportunity today. I'm going to say a prayer. And if if you're feeling that conviction today, that 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 calling on your heart, say, wow, this is me. Or if, if this is being made real to you today, I encourage you right now to lay whatever pride that you have down. Lay whatever it is that someone else might say to you about it down. Don't worry about that.
because this salvation can save you eternally. It doesn't matter what happens on this earth. It doesn't matter who says what about you and your relationship with Jesus. What matters is that you have a real relationship with the, the God who came to be a salvation. The one who lives. Jesus lives so that you may also live too. So let's pray. Father God, I know that I am a sinner. I have messed up many times. But God, I realize today that my sin is serious. That this is enough to make me separate from you. It's enough to send me to a place where I never want to go separated from you. To hell, I don't want to go there, God. And this message I'm hearing for the first time today, it's real. This salvation, I want to be saved, God. And I want to live my life for you. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would save me. That I would accept my sin for what it is. That I would repent, Lord. That I would stop what I'm doing and start living for you for the first time. God, that my life would be changed by it. That I would live for you. That I would love you, God. And that I would be able to give this gift of eternal life and salvation to other people. That I would be filled, Lord, with your Holy Spirit that can help me through anything. God, I repent to you. I ask for this eternal life, this salvation message for the first time. God, I need you. Lord, and you love me so much and I pray God that I can live for you and that you would change me from the inside out consume me Lord in Jesus name Amen the blood course through your veins finding the truest version of yourself by knowing the one who knows you even better than you know yourself. Alright guys, so next week we are going to be diving deeper into the fact that Jesus is alive and living within us in the character of the Holy Spirit. This is the second step. After you've, you have been saved, you have been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to be talking about that, how amazing it is. And this is going to be a beginner's guide to understanding what happens after you're saved by the salvation message. Learning who the Spirit is what role he should play in our lives, and what a spirit-filled person looks like and can look forward to when they ask. Keep on believing, guys. Don't give up. Stay in the word. And if you didn't know, I am not of this world. God bless you guys, and thank you for listening.